Okay, so we'll strain level here, and uh, we're going to do holding uh, here in a little bit, VOR holding. So we, we requested uh, practice holds from air, air traffic control, so now we're just waiting instructions from them. Riddle 462, turn left, direct the Ormond Beach VOR. Riddle 462, direct Ormond Beach VOR. So air traffic control, uh, Tracon wants us to go direct to the VOR. First thing we have to do is put the VOR frequency in, which is on our chart here, 112.6. We already had it in. Before we can use it, we have to identify it. Now, the G1000 actually listens to the Morse code and displays the three-letter identifier up on your nav radio, OMN. You've got to verify that those three letters are the same three letters on your low-on route. So we'll go direct. We'll put in the, push the CDI button, make nav1 active. And what you can do, this course needle right here, this course button, if you push that in, it'll actually center your CDI, and you will use a standard rate turn and proceed direct to the VOR. If you push that in, it automatically points directly towards the VOR, and if we follow the arrow, it'll take us towards it. So first thing you do is tune the VOR, then you identify it by either reading the three-letter identifier, or you can actually push nav1, push the volume ID button, and listen to the Morse code and verify verify the Morse code is the exact same Morse code on your lower and root chart. So we're looking for three dashes, two dashes, one dash, and a dot, and that's what we got. So you can do either one, but you have to verify it against some kind of uh, chart. Which line we chart? So right now, um, if you look at the CDI, this line right here, my little airplane's to the right of the line, which means my radial that I was initially tracking is to the left. So we'll turn about 10 degrees to the left, re-intercept the radial, and when we re-intercept it, we're going to turn back and the wind correction is going to be an interesting thing here because wind changes constantly depending on where we go and altitudes we change. So once you re-intercept your radial, you will want to come back to the radial and put in half the correction. So what I mean by that is that if I turn 20 degrees to the left to re-intercept the radial, when I get back on the radial, I'm not going to take 20 degrees out because I'll get blown off again. I will only take 10 degrees out. And if I, if I keep getting off the radial, then you're going to keep on using trial and error from there, taking in and taking out uh, certain amounts of wind correction angles until you find the one that you want. The G1000 does something cool. It does have this wind vector uh, diamond right here, this ground track diamond, this magenta diamond. So if I align that magenta diamond with my CDI, CDI that's centered, it actually gives me the wind correction, so I don't have to think too much about it. But it is a skill that you want to get. Obviously, you don't want to be too focused on automation and all these things, all these little uh, gadgets, because that doesn't uh, allow you to be a better pilot in the, in the sense that you want to have some basic skills. Okay, so now we're going to conduct uh, holding. So we're going to direct to the VOR, still centered, and uh, the next thing we're going to do is wait on air traffic control to. Uh, could I hit, uh, give us a hold. So we'll notify them that we're ready for the hold. Data approach, Riddle 462 is ready to copy uh, instructions for the hold. Riddle 462, hold west of the Ormond Beach VOR on the 260 radial. Expect further clearance, 1245 Zulu. Riddle 462, hold west of the Ormond VOR on the 260 radial and expect further clearance. Uh, say that time again. At all 462, expect further clearance, 1245 Zulu. 1245 Zulu, 462. Okay, so now we've got a, a hold. The first thing we have to do is figure out what entry we're going to use. Uh, now, if I'm going direct to the VOR, i got to kind of imagine the hold. They said hold west of the VOR. So if I look at my moving map here, here's Ormond, here's west. And they want me to hold west of the VOR on the 260 radial. And they didn't tell me any turns. So I'm assuming that it's right turns because they did not tell me. If there was any other turns, they would have told me left turns. So standard turns are right turns. So if I look at the VOR, the VOR, I can see the 260 radial. Imagine the 260 radial coming out. If you look at the MFD that I'm pointing at here. And I can kind of draw the, VOR, the hold out. And it looks like I'm entering into the direction of the hold. So just by that, I can, it, it makes me think that I'm doing a direct entry. What I can also do is bug 
the 260 radial on my heading indicator, bug the 260 heading, and use something called the pencil method. And what I mean by that is that I bug the heading, I put my pen over the VOR, and since it said right turn, I lift it up about 20 degrees. Now, if I imagine a line coming straight down from the top of the heading indicator to the middle of my pen, it gives me three uh, areas. It gives me a small area, a second, a middle area, and a large area. If it's in the small area, this little triangle on the right side here, that'll be a teardrop entry. If it's the second largest area on the left side of my pen, that'll be a parallel entry. But since my heading indicator bug is on the big largest side, it, that, that confirms that we're doing a direct entry. So we're going to visually uh, imagine what the hold is doing, what, hold, what the hold looks like. And we're also going to confirm it using the pencil method. So now I'm going to direct the VOR, let's plan it out. So direct entry. Direct entry means I'm going to go over the VOR and we're going to do our five T's. Time, turn, twist, throttle, talk. We're going to start our timer once we're outbound. Uh, and to start the time on the outbound, you either start it um, when you have wings level or station passage crossing the VOR, whichever occurs last. Okay. And that's where we'll start our time. And then we're going to use, then we're going to have to adjust for winds. And we're going to have to adjust for winds twice. One to make the inbound uh, leg one minute. And also to uh, make sure we don't undershoot or overshoot the inbound leg when we want to re-intercept it. So I'm going direct to the VOR about three miles away. Now direct entry, what we're going to do is upon crossing the VOR, we're going to turn right. And we're going to track the outbound course, which the 260 radial the outbound course will be 260 on the heading indicator. And we're going to track that for one minute because we're not sure exactly what the winds are going to do. Now, as you get more and more uh, experience, you'll know that if I have a wind coming from the east, I know I'll have a tailwind. So I can already assume that I have to turn inbound a little earlier than one minute. So you, you, make, an, you make adjustments and you anticipate those winds. So I'm just waiting for station passage now. If you look at my almond, my bearing pointer, it says 1.3 miles. We're going to get close to the cone of confusion. So once my VOR CDI needle starts drifting out while I'm maintaining my heading, I'm actually going to uh, stop turning and trying to re-intercept the VOR and just wait till I have station passage. How do I know I have station passage? My indication for the arrow here, I have one arrow and another arrow. This arrow in the middle will actually flip and go to the bottom, indicating a from indication. And that'll tell me that I have station passage. Still maintaining uh, your scan. Okay, CDI has gone all the way out now. Waiting for this arrow to flip to the bottom. And there it is. So do your five T's. You're going to pull up your timer, but we're not going to start it yet. Time, we're going to turn, standard rate turn, to our outbound of 260. We're going to twist to make sure we get the inbound course. So 260, even though we're holding on the 260 radial, we have to have an inbound two indication when we come in on the radial. So then we're going to actually tune in the reciprocal, which will be zero... 080. Standard rate turn, still scanning using our hub and spoke method. We're going to throttle for 100 knots. And since we have entered the hold, we will report that we have entered the hold. Daytime approach, order 462 is established in the hold at 2,000 feet at 1220. Zero. Zero 462, roger. Now, in a training environment when, or in a radar environment, you may not have to report this position uh, because they can see you, but typically in non radar environments or if requested, you will have to report it. So, I have station passage now because I have the two from flag flip. So, I'll start the timer. So station passage or wings level, whichever occurs last, that's when you start the timer. Now I, I do the winds are one three zero. 
I'm looking at my, um, since I'm straight and level, and I knew what the winds are at Daytona, I know I'm going to have a slight tailwind going uh, outbound here. So what I'm actually going to do is only track outbound by, for about 50 seconds and see if that allows me to get one minute on the inbound. So when I get to 50 seconds, I'll start turning inbounds. Now you notice my five T's that I did outbound again, time, turn, twist, throttle, and torque. The torque was reporting that I was established in the hold. Here's 50 seconds. So we'll turn right, right here on right rudder, but standard rate turn, 15 degrees of bank. And we'll reset the timer. And when we restart the timer, we try and get one minute on the inbound, and we're only going to start the timer when we have uh, intercepted the radial or wings level, whichever occurs first on the inbound. So you notice my CDI still hasn't come in yet, but we should anticipate it coming in here soon. There it is. So it's starting to come in. And I'll adjust my bank as necessary so that I don't uh, undershoot it or overshoot it. So it looks like I should re-intercept it, staying at a standard rate turn. There it is. See that I sent it, start the timer. And I'll put wings level. Now I know I have a right crosswind, so I'm going to put about five degrees of wind correction in. Now, whatever wind correction I had on the inbound, you want to triple it and use it on the outbound. Okay, so I'm getting close to the kind of confusion. I'm at 50 seconds here, so we should be relatively close to that one minute mark on the inbound leg. So I'm using about five degrees wind correction on my inbound leg. So I'm going to triple that to 15 degrees and use 15 degrees correction on the outbound leg. So I'm going to hold my heading since we are getting in the kind of confusion, waiting for station passage. So it looks like actually uh, the wind correction on the outbound wasn't enough because we are at 1 minute and 30 seconds here. The station passage. Roll in, right air on right rudder. Time, turn, twist, throttle, and torque. But we don't need to torque anymore because we already reported our position. So since we have a right wind correction on the inbound, we put a left wind correction on the outbound. And we're going to go to about a... 245 heading on the outbound for the 15 degrees of wind correction. Our inbound did take too long, so we're going to shorten our outbound time to about another 10 seconds, so it becomes trial and error at this point. I'll bug my wind correction heading. So there's station passage. Now you'll notice I did go wings level before I had station passage. I only start the timer uh, on wings level or station passage again, whichever occurs last, just as a reminder. So at this point, we'll use 40 seconds because it took 50 seconds took too long last time on the inbound. Okay, here's 40 seconds. We'll start our right turn. I'll reset the timer. And 
and we'll see if our wind correction, that 15 degrees wind correction on the outbound, allowed us to re-intercept the CDI appropriately on the inbound without having to adjust bank too much. This is the CDI coming in now. And we'll start the timer at wind level or CDI intercept or radial intercept, whichever occurs first. All right, there's CDI intercept, start the timer. And we'll roll out on our five degrees wind correction. So that wind correction actually did work. Uh, we used 15 degrees of wind correction outbound, and you saw that we didn't have to adjust the bank too much to get on the radial. We'll see if we get one minute inbound here and then make adjustments as necessary on further uh, on further laps around the, the hold until uh, ATC then removes us from the hold. Now, holds are used to hold us over certain areas in case ATC is congested. They need to maintain separation. Uh, and typically you'll find this going into a lot of times uncontrolled airports if they're having IFR departures into the uncontrolled airports and you're trying to arrive, they'll hold you. Or going into very heavy, uh, uh, saturated, heavily saturated airports. All right, there's uh, 50 seconds and 0.3 nautical miles away from the VOR. And looks like that worked last time. So 40 seconds is what we're going to use. So that's holding. Uh, you're going to correct for wind twice. And when I say twice, I mean uh, wind correction so that we re-intercept the radial uh, inbound without overshooting, undershooting it. And also making sure the inbound leg is one minute. Uh, we're going to depart the hold here. And uh, what also we have to watch out for is the different type of entries. Make sure that you don't use something just uh, as rote memory as the pencil method. Actually try and visualize the approach. If I'm entering, crossing the, the, the holding fix in the direction of the hold, then it's, it's going to be a direct entry. If I cross it, the holding fix in the opposite direction of the hold, you have to ask yourself, am I crossing into the holding side or the non-holding side? Because if I'm crossing the holding side, then that'll tell me that it's going to be a teardrop entry. And if I cross into the non-holding side, it'll typically be a parallel entry. And then you can back it up with your pencil method. Anyway, and that's holding.